So there's a major problem in crisis in Brooklyn, New York right now. Thousands of people are facing foreclosure and hundreds of thousands pre foreclosure. And you wanna know why? Stay tuned. <music> What's up, everybody? Welcome to Ask Trendy. I'm Rindy Adebayo, digital entrepreneur, real estate entrepreneur, and top producing real estate agent here in New Jersey. And welcome to Ask Trendy. If it's your first time on my channel, please hit the subscribe button and smash the like button. I do videos about foreclosure, income, and credit, and I would love to have you as a part of our growing network all around the country. Brooklyn is facing a crisis. Wow, you've probably seen the headlines in the most recent news regarding the surprising surge and rise of foreclosure rates within Brooklyn over the last three years. It's been quite alarming. Brooklyn is no doubt facing a crisis with over 8,000 foreclosures currently. I'm talking about foreclosures going down in Kings County and over 300,000 and more pre-foreclosures currently actually in some point of queue leading up to uh, foreclosure filings. It's quite an alarming trend and it's quite an alarming epidemic that's currently facing New York. And many, many times, if you're from New York, if you've ever visited New York, it can be surprising because, you know, we're here from the Tri-State area, we're from the New York area. There's a lot of money here. And uh, of course, you know, there's a lot of uh, power and influence from Wall Street, uh, New York being the financial capital of the world. And so it would be surprising to find out that one of the boroughs that's supposed to be one of the hottest rising markets for real estate would also ironically be uh, one of the main targets and the main points of interest right now for foreclosure. And surprisingly, the majority of foreclosures that are going on in Brooklyn right now are in a few key areas and neighborhoods that are quote unquote going under a gentrification process. Um, those areas include East New York, Canarsie, Crown Heights, and Bed Bedford Stuyvesant or Bed Stuy, as most people would know it, or if you watch the movies, you've heard Bed Stuy do or die, uh, Biggie Smalls. So I used to live in Brooklyn years ago. I used to live in Prospect Park, and I went to PS217. And I can tell you, being very familiar with the city, the city has actually undergone a major transformation over the last 20 years. A lot of changes have gone down. Um, I used to hang out a lot in Sunset Park with friends. I had a music group, and I also would hang out in Bed Stuy. Um, I had a uh, girlfriend there at the time. And so I've seen the change within um, New York and I've seen the change within the kind of other boroughs. Many times, you know, if you've ever visited New York, came here for like a tourist vis a visit or a vacation, uh, many people focus on concentrating on Manhattan. But New York consists of five boroughs and that's Brooklyn, Staten Island, the Bronx, uh, Queens and Manhattan. So Brooklyn currently right now is undergoing a major change and a major uh, problem because they are seeing an epidemic that I would say probably very few places are seeing within the country right now. And the interesting part about this is that generally what we're used to when it comes to foreclosure and the issue and the process of it is that people fall behind because they're dealing with financial problems. And so the lenders and the uh, banks then start the process to foreclose. Now, New York is also a judicial state, just like New Jersey, where I'm from, is a judicial state as well. And ironically, New York and New Jersey, with the exception of Guam, out of all the states within the U.S., have the longest foreclosure process basically of all states. We have a one-year uh, foreclosure process for judicial foreclosure. So the lenders have to go through a certain process to be able to get the person from basically having the list pendants filed to all the way through to basically setting up a sheriff sale on auction date to auction off the property. The crazy thing and the alarming thing about Brooklyn is the fact that Brooklyn's foreclosure epidemic and crisis really has nothing to do with people's negligence per se when it comes to mortgage payments, etc. The list of problems that are causing Brooklyn's foreclosure crisis are huge. New York is a great city, but it's also an old city. So you have a lot of buildings that are there that are older and those within those buildings, people have different ownership interests. There are a lot of co-ops in New York. And so aside from people who own whole buildings or let's say brownstones like they did in Harlem, there are also people who own co-ops. So co-ops basically also can be foreclosed upon, similarly to how a condo or residential um, fee simple ownership for a property, a single family residential can be foreclosed on as well. And the issue that we have here is that what we are uncovering and finding out about the foreclosure epidemic in Brooklyn is really telling on where things are, not only from a local level, but from also a uh, so quote unquote resurgence level. And while New York is a great city and arguably the greatest city on earth, uh, considered the financial capital of the world, a home to Wall Street, 
the uh, World Trade Center and much, much more, there's also another side to it. And for the people that live here, we deal with things like traffic, we deal with things like uh, pollution, we deal with different things that not necessarily we can complain about, but it has its drawbacks, just like I guess anywhere else that you would live. One of the main things though that I've found and I've uncovered regarding dealing with and helping clients that are based out of New York is that many of the issues that they have, about 70 to 60, 60 to 70% of what they're dealing with has to do with the fact that the city and the municipality itself has error regarding or attached to it. Illegal deed swaps. People are actually swapping out deeds and stealing people's deeds in order to sell their houses out from under them illegally. They're also uh, preying on the elderly. Many, many elderly people are having major problems because uh, they have houses that they've had in their families for years, maybe it was passed down to them, and people are now coming and trying to take the properties from them. They're meeting with them. Some of them are trying to offer them pennies on a dollar. Some of them are also trying to see if they can get uh, documents uh, taken out from under them. Um, I have friends that actually own property in Brooklyn, and so I'm dealing with this firsthand. I actually know what's going on and uh, regarding what they're trying to do with their, their parents, their aunts and uncles, people who've had the property since like the early 50s, uh, 30s, 40s, and it's crazy. There's also a lack of notification for foreclosure proceedings. So you can't do that in a digital state, it's illegal. You cannot not notify the, the, uh, the borrower. The borrower has rights. And uh, what's happening is that foreclosure proceedings are being done and they're not being notified properly. You also have a catastrophic number of pre-foreclosures that are actually pending and on the rise right now. Many people are in pre-foreclosure status within Brooklyn, New York. You also have people losing their homes due to liens, for minor bills, like small bills, they're having liens put against the property. You have people losing their homes to tax liens, obviously. You have people losing their homes to water bills. There's a lot of problems. I mean, you also have lack of affordability where New York, the city is just getting more and more expensive. I mean, just imagine, there are very few places that are very affordable right now in the US. The cost of living is going up everywhere. Even in the Midwest, other areas, you're watching me from those areas, you know that the cost of living generally is going up. There's no, no longer 50 cent milk. There's no longer you know, uh, inexpensive eggs. There's no longer what they call quote unquote uh, cheap living anymore. There may be some cities that are, that are less expensive to live in, but generally compared with where they were maybe about 10 years or five years ago, the cost of living overall everywhere you are is going up. And so New York especially is becoming very, very unaffordable. And one of the main reasons why I believe Brooklyn is in the dead center of this perfect foreclosure storm, this crisis, so to speak, that's unlike anything else we're seeing in the country, is because of the HBD in New York, the Housing Preservation Development uh, Division, and their TPT program, Third Party Transfer Program. This program was set up in 1996, and basically what it was supposed to do was take properties that were behind in their taxes and had uh, basically unpaid debt city debt, municipal debt on them. And that, and they were meant to basically uh, help to preserve the community, so to speak. So what they would do is the city set this in motion to be able to quote unquote help and uh, keep uh, you know the properties clean. As we know, like I said, New York is a great city, but New York was not always clean like it is now. New York was very filthy, very dirty. A lot of issues with rats and all these problems. So the city stepped in to quote unquote create this program and this program was meant to basically help to not only preserve the properties, but what it would do is that for people who were landlords that were not keeping up with the property and uh, people that were delinquent, what they would do is they would take the property and then transfer their ownership or forfeit, they would forfeit the property uh, to, to and transfer it to nonprofits uh, that would actually uh, take the property over uh, you know, take care of it, preserve it, etc. So it was meant to be a quote unquote preservation um, tool and move that would help the city. I mean, you're dealing with a city that has millions upon millions of people. There's a lot of buildings in New York. There's a lot of properties. Many times we see the great Manhattan, but then outside of Manhattan, you have other four other boroughs. There's a lot of, that's a lot of real estate. The issue that you have though is the fact that in current day with all the uh, changes going on where people are running from Manhattan now, Brooklyn is one of the biggest targets and biggest markets because the size of, if you're from New York or you visited or have any family or friends in New York, you, you know that the real estate in Brooklyn, as far as um, the living space, it's much larger. It's much better. It just feels different. 
Um, when you're in Manhattan, you're paying like, you know, maybe $3,000 for a little small box. In Brooklyn, uh, you know, you have like a good sized room, like what we have here in New Jersey. You have space, you know, and it's more of like a suburban feel, so to speak, um, than New York, where you're smack dab right in the middle of it. And you're, you know that you're within only city. Uh, within Brooklyn, you have some sort of like a homely feel. It's, it just feels different. But more importantly, the property sizes are larger. And so the brownstones, the buildings, the apartment sizes, they're, they're, they're different. It's no different like within Manhattan. If you go further uptown, you have larger apartments. Like, you know, in Spanish Harlem, they're much larger than you, if you, the further down the city you go, if you, you know, your price per square foot increases drastically depending on the size and the proportions of the square footage of the, your, your unit, whether it's an apartment or whatever it is that you're either renting or purchasing. And so Brooklyn is a major target and that, that's why the resurgence or that's why it has surged as far as the target for development. Uh, we've seen the changes on Atlantic, on Atlantic Avenue. We've seen the uh, Barclays Center come in and there's just a whole change downtown Brooklyn that's basically uh, spreading throughout Brooklyn. Now, the issue that we have here is that with the HBD and the TBT program, they have now created a storm. And because the city now has been taking these properties from these people and giving it to not only nonprofits, but they're giving it to also for-profit developers. But the issue now is that the, the properties that they're giving to these quote-unquote nonprofits, some of these nonprofits are on Wall Street. Now, I can tell you, I used to work on Wall Street. I used to work for Goldman Sachs years ago. And I've never met or seen a nonprofit down on Wall Street. I don't even know that there exists a nonprofit in Wall Street. I think that is a pass-through, obviously, but what is a nonprofit doing on Wall Street? It just doesn't add up. So why I'm doing this video is because there's a lot of foul play. And ironically, out of all the places and all the uh, places that we do business with helping people with foreclosure uh, around the country, this is probably one of the most disturbing stories happening in Brooklyn because you have people losing their properties and forfeiting their properties because of things that is based on a grand plan. And that grand plan has to do with the move and shift from buying real estate, um, Manhattan real estate that's so expensive, shifting to Brooklyn. And ironically, using a quote unquote city program such as TBT that was established in 1996 to be able to do that. So anyone that's involved in real estate, I um, market real estate here in um, New Jersey. I'm one of the top producing real estate agent. And I can tell you that one of the things that we target are probate. And probate basically, uh, probate properties are people who uh, have inherited the property. Um, they got the property and maybe they can't afford it. It's just too much. They have their own life that they're living. I, I think I've done a video on probate real estate, uh, but um, it, it's, it's a burden, so to speak. And it comes with a lot of issues where there's repairs that needs to be done, disrepair. And in, in an essence, those people just want to sell. They just want to be able to give the property to an investor. The issue with New York is that the prices are so high, it's very competitive. And so why, while people and de developers and investors can't get probate, they turn to programs such as the TPT to get on their list because the TPT does and perform uh, the same similar action to what would happen with either a probate or let's say a tax lien, where a tax lien, uh, a person doesn't pay their taxes, there's a lien created, and until they uh, basically pay off that lien, if they don't, would by the time the deadline comes, they forfeit the property. Well, the TPT program has caused a major problem because what they're doing is the city is taking the properties from these people and then giving it over to not only nonprofits, but they're giving it to developers. The issue that you have here is the fact that some of these properties that have been targeted, and majority of them are in Brooklyn. Some of them are in the Bronx, but majority of them are in Brooklyn. Majority of these properties that have been targeted have been targeted erroneously. These people have paid their taxes. They have paid their water, lead, their, their water bill. The issue is that the city is so backward and the municipal that they never recorded these payments. So they have them marked as an error and unpaid and then actually put them on this list, this target list for the TBT to go after the property for forfeiture. But the issue that you have is the fact that they never recorded this. So it happened twice. There was a there was a article and there was a, there were headlines made, and this came to light. We didn't know what was going on until this came to light uh, a few years ago. And that was the story of Miss Marlene Saunders, 
Ms. Marlene Saunders is a nurse that uh, had a property in a brownstone in Brooklyn and ironically um, had the property appraised for $2.2 million and was surprised to find out that not only was she not given notice, but her property was put on a TPT list and sold for a mere $3,792.20. The, the city took her house for $3,792.20. No notice given. Just imagine that. So you have a property, you've built up, you've lived in this property, it was passed down for you from, gen from previous generation, or you bought the property you know, years, uh, decades ago, and you've built up this equity. And even if it's not a whole property, it's a co-op. And then to have the city come and take the property and forfeit it or take it from you and sell it off to a developer for $3,792.20, something that's worth $2.2 million, that's what's going on in Brooklyn right now. That's the problem. There's also other people who have had their properties taken from them. And the issue that you have here is this. This is the big issue. The issue you have is this. If somebody steals your car, you can actually go follow the police report uh, call the police. They can do a search, look, either recover the car or you can actually file a claim with your insurance. There's ways to recover a stolen car. The issue is when you get your property stolen from you, that's a whole different ballgame. So these people are getting their property stolen from them. These people can't go to the NYPD and report my house was stolen. They have to actually now go into court and actually now fight to get their own properties back. Just imagine that. There's several cases, high profile cases going on. If you guys want to look into it and check it out, I'll see if I can leave a link below for one of them. But there, there, there are high profile cases going on right now where people actually have to sue in court to get their properties back because of this TPT program. I mean, completely illegal. You cannot take a property without, without proper notice. And the city is claiming that they have sent these notices out. There's no record of them. There's no certified mail. There's nothing. And so what's happening basically is that these developers are moving into Brooklyn and they're using this TPT program to be able to get properties for not only pennies on the dollar, but pretty much for nothing. And what's going on is that in addition to that, the city has this task force of inspectors, quote unquote inspectors, that go out. And there are certain criteria that uh, put your property on that list, that TPT list. Uh, as a target and as a uh, property that's earmarked to either be sold off or taken because of uh, violations. So it's three things. The debt to value ratio has to be 15%. You have to have at least five violations against your property. And also you have to have a tax lien of only just $1,000. Those three things combined put you on the TPT list. Just imagine. So you can lose a property that's worth $3 million dollars by having a tax lien of $1,000. The problem here is the fact that the notice is not being given. New York is in all disarray, specifically what's happening in Brooklyn. Many of the pre-foreclosures, many of the foreclosures that are going on are because the notice is not given. It's completely illegal. So there's a lot of illegal foreclosures going on in Brooklyn right now. There's a lot of predatory foreclosures going on in Brooklyn right now. There's a lot of issues that are not even followed by the law. And there are people who are going to the courthouse and basically bidding on properties. And prior to that, they're doing all they can to either try to get the property by illegally taking, uh, deeding the property over. They're preying on the elderly. It's just a, a complete mess over there. Worst of all is the fact that the city and uh, de Blasio, the mayor, is not recognizing these issues. They're looking at it like, well, there's just a few properties. But the problem is that this is an epidemic. And a lot of people have brought this to light. There's been community activists. There's been politicians that have gotten involved. I just, I'm surprised the fact that this is not making national headlines because I've seen a lot of fraud uh, in my years uh, from banks and lenders and servicers in dealing with foreclosures. But this here is, is a different level because, you know, you have an entire, uh, I would say, probably population of people that are actually in foreclosure and pre-foreclosure because of illegal moves by developers, illegal moves by the city themselves, illegal moves by the banks. So they're, they're having uh, attacks from three, three, from three uh, fronts at this point. And the issue that you have is that if a person is in court trying to fight to get their property back and they're told that they don't own the property anymore, that the property was forfeited by and taken by the city and they still have a mortgage on the property and they're paying that mortgage, 
How would they continue to pay the mortgage of a property that they're being threatened to actually lose or being told that they lost? This is the issue that you have. There's a lot of confusion. So what's going on is that people who do have existing mortgages on the property, whether it's small or large or whatever, and they, they are falling into this mix, so-called uh, mix of the TPT, they're not going to continue to make payments because as far as they're concerned, they're putting money after good money after bad because the lenders and the servicers are not recognizing them as the owner, yet they're still on the hook. So it's a huge problem because what's going on is that New York, ironically, the city itself is creating this foreclosure epidemic that we're seeing in Brooklyn. And I can't tell you the number of families that are being affected. We have a few people that we're helping right now. Like I shared, I have friends, personally, personal friends who personally own property in Brooklyn. And of course, many people are trying to hold on to their property because they do believe and see the change. They know that the movement is coming from Manhattan. Brooklyn is basically the next thing, the next big thing. And ironically, um, what's going on with the foreclosures are basically putting them in a position where they can lose their asset. They've already built up the equity over years. They've already have positioned themselves as in their family. And you cannot foreclose on someone and take their property because you claim that they have a water lien and they have a tax lien when you never sent them notice. That's just like, you know, that that's unbelievable. So I'm really surprised that this is not being dealt with from a national level. This is a major problem. I'm surprised that no one's speaking about this, um, but we are helping many, many people there now. And we're focusing on Brooklyn to be able to help more uh, people deal with their situations. And, you know, the funds that were established years ago to be able to help um, residents and low income residents and residents in general, uh, you know, pass through issues and hard times. All those funds generally have been depleted. Programs such as the CDFI, community-based financial institutions that were set up many, many years ago that were supposed to be help, helping uh, residents that were pretty much dealing with foreclosure preventions, we uh, found out that those funds have not been funded in over 12 years, 15 years. They haven't been, not even a cent gone into them. Also, programs come, such as the Community First Network uh, that were set up to be able to help with foreclosure pre prevention, it has been almost virtually completely depleted because they're dealing with an epidemic where pe they don't have enough resources to help the people. There's too many people that need help. They can't help them all. And also, and, and many of the foreclosure prevention uh, uh, funds and programs that they've set up have been cut. Their funding has been cut by the state. They were cut years ago. They went from uh, 20 million to uh, 8 million. Uh, and even at 8 million, they're not dispersed. We really don't know what they do with this money, but basically it doesn't get to the people that need the help and nothing's being done. So pretty much right now in Brooklyn, what people are facing, what they're dealing with is they're dealing with a nightmare, so to speak, because they have these properties that they have um, uh, worked for, uh, suffered, slaved for, have been passed down to them on their fam from their families. Not only are they dealing with regular foreclosures, just the fact that they're living in a city that's one of the most expensive cities in the world, cost of living is going up. But in addition to that, they have a negligent municipal uh, state, New York state. The uh, the government is very negligent because for them to actually put these people in a position where they have to then refute and go and chase their properties, go to court. I mean, you know, there's articles where the judges are slamming the TPT because you have a problem where the city, they're not recognizing the fact that all the things that they're doing is completely illegal. So many people have claimed, have uh, petitioned to have the um, the program stopped, uh, halted. Uh, they're still pursuing it. They're still moving forward with it. And so that's what led me to actually do this video to share with you that there is help. Uh, we do have a reinstatement fund that we've established to basically uh, review and see who we can help. We plan to grow our fund. Our fund is just starting, but we would like, like to basically uh, hear about what you're dealing with and join the network. So many people have speculated about why Brooklyn is having this big problem and what's causing so many foreclosures in one of the most successful and prosperous uh, states in the entire world. And I, I'm going to say this, I'm going to go on record as saying this, the number one thing and the one, number one reason why I feel Brooklyn is facing this problem, this epidemic, is very simply corruption. I think that there's major corruption going on behind the scenes. I believe that this is a part of a grand uh, scheme to not only move people out of neighborhoods that are, quote unquote, trying to be regentrified, but I also believe that the developers and uh, are in cahoots and working with uh, some of these local inspectors because you have inspectors showing up to people's properties constantly and continuously. 
I mean, they're inspecting things like nails in the wall. They're inspecting uh, lights that are already passed for CO and, 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 and cleared by the city. They're re-inspecting and re-inspecting. They're going to people's properties. They're harassing them. And they're doing things to try to create these quote-unquote violations. There are people who are losing their properties for claim violations that they don't even have. There are no violations. They are even clear. There's one guy who actually repainted, remodeled his entire brownstone, his property. And they put him on the list and tried to sell his property off. His family caught it in time and were able to stop them. And so my point basically is the fact that there's widespread corruption going on in New York. And I believe that we have to actually draw a light to it. This is my main reason for doing this video. I'm going to go on record, like I said before, there's corruption going on within Brooklyn. And the only people that I feel that are gaining from this are ironically the attorneys. The attorneys are the ones making money all around. They're cleaning up in Brooklyn right now. I know attorneys that are making bank in Brooklyn right now. And the reason why is simply because when uh, the problems occur, they make money. When you go to court to try to sue to get your property back, they make money. If you're in regular foreclosure and you don't know what to do and you're not informed, you're not, you don't have the knowledge and what, what to do and you're not uh, versed on what your rights are, they make money because you're going to turn to them. You're going to do whatever they tell you. And so you have to actually um, uh, be aware of these two things that are going on within New York. I, if I were, uh, I don't own property in New York right now. If I own property in New York, specifically in Brooklyn, I would definitely uh, do two things. I would reach out to me, meaning contact us so that we can tell you exactly what you need to do. And also the second thing I would do is I would watch my property, like literally watch my property because there are people who are losing their properties. They don't even know they're losing their properties. It's crazy. It's that bad. So if you're in New York and need help, reach out to us. We are already helping people there right now. We already have uh, people that we are actually helping facilitate through their issues right now, currently in Brooklyn, New York. It doesn't matter who's coming at you, if it's the HPD, if it's the TPT, if it's scammers, if it's investors, if it's the banks or the servicers for the banks, if it's the tax lien, the water lien, etc. It does not matter. We know what to do and deal with all of them each head on, full force. So click on the link below to connect with us, join the network, find out what you can do and what you need to do regarding facing your situation. If you're dealing with a pre-foreclosure situation, there are things that you really need to be aware of right now. If you're in Brooklyn, you need to be aware of that. And if you're in foreclosure, we can help you stop that foreclosure. You have to reach out to us. So you need to know what your rights are and we'll tell you exactly what you need to do, what you need to watch out for. And we can also show you how to properly secure your property and insulate it invariably insulated from all this nonsense that's going on in Brooklyn. So I strongly encourage you to be able to apply for our reinstatement fund, uh, join the network, askrainy.com, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on the inside. Uh, we look forward to growing with you and helping you through all the issues and basically facing any enemies that are coming against you, all the people that think that they can take the property off from under you uh, through an illegal deed swap, or uh, you know, a predatory foreclosure, et cetera, et cetera. We look forward to helping you and surprising them uh, on your behalf. So until next time, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.